then that sort of opened up some strange things for me. And, and I guess through my story, I'm going to be mentioning a lot of things that probably should have made me think about the organization on a deeper level, should have made me question things, but I just sort of suppressed it all and ignored a lot of things. So I found being a minister or servant in that congregation I grew up with very tough because our our presiding overseer, as, the, as they were called in those times, um, he was one of those really old school elders that sort of felt the congregation was his mm. congregation. Like he he owned it. He was the he was the chief, and we were the Indians. And so there was again this very um, very strict control over everything, how everything was done. There was there was no freedom of opinion or how you might carry out certain tasks. Um, but, you know, I, I coped with that. It sort of all came to a head at one point where there was a couple of other ministerial servants in the congregation that were also feeling that, you know, this just wasn't right, the way he was doing things and, and oppressing everyone. Uh, and one particular was an ex-elder who'd moved in and was a servant. And so he had a lot of experience and he also could see that this was just not right. So... So three or four of us, I think it was, we decided we, we needed to do something. We needed, we thought, you know, God's spirit wasn't working in this congregation and we, we, we didn't feel like we could talk to him because he would just go, go nuts at us. We didn't feel like we could talk to any the other elders because they all just seemed to be under his control as well. They just seemed to be his yes men, as it were. So we decided the only thing we could do was go to the circuit overseas. So there was a circuit assembly coming up and we all went to the circuit overseer and we uh, we explained what was going on in the congregation, we explained how we felt about it. Um, the circuit overseer sort of thanked us for that and opened up an investigation. And I remember how crazy that, that whole assembly was. The whole weekend was just interview after interview. So what they did was... The circuit overseer got the, the district overseer involved who was serving that assembly and the two of them got each of us in turn on our own separately and just grilled us for hours on end about the situation. And after they interviewed us all, then they sort of went back and interviewed us all again based on the, the other information that obtained. So initially we thought, well, this is, this is positive, you know, the society is listening to us and they were going to do something about it. But, of course, what happened was that uh, it all just went back to him and mm. I'm sure the, the circuit overseer, you know, gave him feedback and some counsel. I don't know what was said to him, but nothing was actually done about it in any practical way. So so the fallout from it was that um, I guess maybe because I was sort of one of the chief instigators of it, he he really directed his, his animosity to me animosity to me even further so at the time as I said I was doing public talks I had my own book study group I was almost doing everything an elder would be doing and all that was taken off me because I'd gone behind his back and acted disloyally so mm -hmm. basically he dissolved the group I was in he put me in his his book study group where he could keep an eye on me and keep keep me under control and this is the bizarre thing, Fifth. I was I was not removed as a ministerial servant, so I was still an appointed man, but I was treated like a disfellowship person for all wow. intents and purposes. So uh, he wouldn't let me take the field service group. I was barely allowed to answer. When I did answer, he just sort of snarled at my my comments and, and looked at me disdainfully. Um, I wasn't allowed to do anything, so I had no privileges anymore, even though I was still a, a ministerial servant. Uh, it was like I was put in the, the naughty corner, as mm. it were. I mean, and then his true colours came to the fore, and, and I realised that he was an even worse man than the, the, the man I'd left. Um, I have to put this in context and say that, you know, I've, w I've worked with many, many wonderful elders over the years, so I don't want to portray a... A wrong picture you know many of these elders I've worked with have been very loving very genuine men but 
But over the time, there has been some real bad ones, some bad eggs in that mix. And this one was probably one of the worst. Mm. Um, so uh, just to give you sort of an idea of, of how he, he ran the congregation, it, it was really like with an iron fist, you know. Everything was controlled to the minutest detail. And again, we used to get in trouble for the, the slightest things. So it might be... Um, it was just so hard to get anything done or anything nice and joyful. There was such an oppressive atmosphere in that in that kingdom hall. And then, of course, um, being a person who wanted to create a sense of community and a sense of joy in the brothers and sisters there, uh, I was always trying to do things and always getting myself into trouble mm. uh, with, with this particular elder. And... There was other things too, like I remember a time where um, a sister had this uh, emotionally abusive husband and at one point it got so bad that he basically kicked her out of the house, threw all the clothes and stuff on the lawn and, and locked her out of the house. And she was good friends with my wife, so she called my wife and we went and got her and we uh, invited her to stay with us for the night just until she got herself sorted out. And again, as soon as this elder found out, he was around to our place, grilling us, telling us how inappropriate it was because we were interfering in their marriage. Mm. And you know, all we were doing was just this humanitarian thing. The sister was out on the street and we just gave her somewhere to sleep for the night. And uh, we, we were sort of punished. It should have been kind of the happiest time in your life, but they, the elders at time made it really miserable for us because... Uh, we couldn't do anything right. If we were seen holding hands, we were straight away taken out to the back room and counselled. Uh, everything we did, we were counselled for. They just interfered with everything. Um, eventually, it got so bad that the circuit overseer even got involved. Mm. Uh, to his credit, he actually pulled the elders aside and said, hey, brothers, look, if, if, if the parents are approving, just, just stay out of it. Mind your own business. So... <laughs> I thank them for that, but uh, I just remember what a, what a miserable time it was, uh, just not being able to have a natural courtship just because everything you did was so micromanaged and everything was observed and, and criticised.